Hello guys, and welcome back to Ninjago News TV. Today is my first look special in which I will talk about my hopes for Season 9, in addition to discussing and saying my thoughts on minor Season 9 theories. I will be listing a few hopes that I have about Season 9, and then I'll be moving on to talking about some theories. These theories are minor, meaning that I don't think they deserve their own videos. So, without further ado, let's get into the video. My first hope is for a quote-unquote epic season finale. Honestly, season finales have definitely gone downhill since season 4. That being said, the season finales from seasons 4 to 8 aren't bad at all. They're good, actually. But they lack the emotion in the fight that the finales from season 2 and 3 actually did have. My hope is that season 9 will have a finale that does have that emotion and a great fight also. After all, assuming the story doesn't go into a season 10, this season finale will resolve both the events of season 9 and season 8. So you need a really good season finale to resolve two seasons actually. And season 2, the season, finale for season 2 resolved both season 1 and season 2. So I'm hoping the finale for season 9 does this just the same way season 2 did. I really want a good finale that has emotion and a good fight also. My second hope is that Iron Baron has a solid backstory that is fleshed out and revealed to the audience somehow. I actually like the way that Harumi's story was revealed in her flashback. And to be honest, I don't care how it's revealed, I just want there to be a backstory. The villains like Pythor and Nauticon were actually amazing villains, some of the best in the series, but both lacked a good backstory. Pythor didn't even have one, whereas Nauticon had a very weak backstory. I hope that Iron Baron has a strong, solid backstory that benefits his character and makes, his, makes him as a villain really good. It brings him above and beyond. You know, that's the kind of backstory that I'm hoping this character has. My third and final hope is that Wu will receive a lot of character development and take the spotlight for the season. Even though the writers have said that there is no focus character, I'm still hoping that Wu will take the lead. I want meaningful interactions with Cole and the other ninja, and in the latter portion of the season, I hope he's fighting against the Dragon Keepers and has found his power, his creation power. Hopefully, as the season progresses, he'll start to reassume his role as leader of the team, and he'll actually take the reins as the ninja go back to Ninjago. I also really want him to fight Garmanon, as I have mentioned. This would also develop his character a lot and enhance a great season finale, like I was talking about earlier. So those are my three biggest hopes for the season, and now I'm going to mention minor theories. I'll review them, take a look at them, and actually comment them, whether I think they're likely to happen or not. Again, most of these theories are minor and don't deserve their own videos. Some of them are stuff that I plan to talk about later, but just want to give some insight into what I think about. So anyways, let's get started with the theories. The first theory here is the whole Kai betrays the ninja or turns evil thing. This photo has sparked a lot of debate in the community. It shows Kai driving the vehicle while Heavy Metal attacks a dragon and brings it down. Why is Kai driving the vehicle with Heavy Metal? So there are a few possibilities here. Kai could be forced to drive for them, but that wouldn't make much sense. The Dragon Hunter army is massive, so they should have enough drivers. I think what's actually likely is he's pretending to ally with them, similar to what he did with Chen in Season 4. Or he could just betray the ninja, but that really wouldn't make much sense either. In all honesty, I think we'll just have to wait and see. This next one is based on a Tommy Andresen tweet. In the Japanese Season 9 trailer, we did see this nice shot of the Elemental Masters. However, there are some missing. The missing elemental fighters included Bolobo, Camille, Jacob, and Ash, if I'm not mistaken. Tommy commented on Twitter and responded to a question about where the missing elemental masters are. He actually said that the missing elemental masters are all in the same location. And this led to a theory that the elemental masters turn evil. But are they really evil? There are honestly a lot of villains in Season 9, so I don't think that they turn evil. One possibility is that they've been captured by the Sons of Garmadon, which I find to be definitely very likely. Maybe they're captured along with Lloyd or something like that. Another possibility could be that they haven't arrived yet, but that doesn't make much sense either, just the way that a show goes. It would be much more exciting if they were captured, in all honesty. The third thing to mention is if the Sons of Garmadon will be defeated by the end of Season 9. I personally believe that when Season 9 ends, the Sons of Garmadon will be defeated in one way or another. I'll talk about this more in an upcoming video, but I don't think that the storyline will continue into a potential Season 10. 
The fact that Season 8's story continued into Season 9 is actually super cool, but I don't see the same villains returning yet again in a Season 10, if there even is one. The writers and Tommy Andreessen have hinted at Season 10 multiple times. If anything, I think that Season 10 could very well be the last season, and it may give way to a more supernatural villain, rather than the Sons of Garmadon. This is another topic I will explain later, but that topic is actually if Mr. E is Echo Zane. Tommy also did hint at Echo Zane's return in Season 9, and since Mr. E is a robot, there's talk about whether the two may be the same person. I think that there's actually a 50-50 chance that either could happen, and those two choices would be that Mr. E is either just a robot, a normal robot, or that he is actually Echo Zane. Remember, Mr. E is a very minor character now, having his role decreased very much since the beginning of Season 8 which makes it less likely for him to actually have a bigger role in the season. However, a true reveal for his identity would satisfy viewers very much and bring something different towards his character. After all, the E in his name could stand for Echo, or it's just a pun on mystery. It would be super cool to see him revealed as Echo Zane, but at the same time, I think he may just be a normal robot. The last thing I'm going to talk about today is based on this photo. Take a good look at that red circle. It's cool, but what's peculiar about it? Will Cole go undercover in Season 9? So just to break this down, this photo shows him with white face paint and Dragon Keeper clothing, leading us to believe that he may go undercover as a Dragon Keeper in Season 9. How would this work out? Well, look somewhere else in the photo. The firstborn dragon is actually flying around, breathing fire. Remember, the ninja are going to be captured in Season 9, and Cole is the only one with the disguise here. See, don't, see what I'm getting at? What if Cole and the firstborn dragon teamed up to break the ninja out? He'd redeem himself for his last failed attempt as Rocky Danger Buff in Season 8. The firstborn dragon would distract the dragon keepers, whereas Cole could actually get the ninja out. I find it very likely that he will infiltrate the dragon keepers base in order to liberate the ninja. So that's gonna wrap up this video. Thank you guys so much for watching my first look special. If you enjoyed, leave a like, subscribe, share with anyone and everyone you know. Tomorrow is a video concerning Iron Baron's backstory, and then we have more videos coming up concerning about the Sons of Garbodon, Mr. E, and everything else. So anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you next time.